My name is Michael, and um, when I was in sixth grade, I thought nuclear fusion was really cool, and I really wanted to build a fusion reactor, so I tried to, but I couldn't get all the parts necessary, but, um, so it didn't work out in the end, but I did do a lot of research on it at the time, and I do know a little bit about it, so here's a general summary on how to build a nuclear fusion reactor, and I'll kind of offer my own, like, insight on, um, on, inside on like certain things and towards the end I'll I'll show like what these parts are here and what they are and how they function so um, but first as a uh, some disclaimers is that this is a very dangerous project and it involves the use of high voltage levels radiation and explosive gas and many other dangerous aspects I'm not really an expert on this and or I'm not an expert on this and I may say something wrong in this video so you should definitely consult further materials and research more on how to build a nuclear reactor if you are interested um, and make sure they're good and ma make sure they're good materials as well uh, the next uh, next disclaimer is that I don't I, there's also a lot of like a I don't know the legality of, of this issue of like building a nuclear fusion reactor, like wherever you live and it, the legality might be different because you are dealing with radiation and stuff like that and like an explosive gas. So definitely make sure, um, make sure that it's illegal for, for someone to do it in your area, not only for it, that it's illegal, but also someone of whatever age you are, if you're like under 18 or 21. Also, this is a very uh, like an expensive project to to do. So, if you are under sixteen, I highly rec recommend that y you wait until you are at least sixteen because not only is it pricey, but it's also it also requires that you have a lot of freedom in what you do, and also that that also it's a pretty complex project. So, if you're under sixteen, it might be a little too hard for you to understand because, again understanding the concepts that I say in this video isn't enough if you're going to actually build it you need to understand like how each individual part functions that you're specifically using and like uh, you need to understand a lot of things that go beyond this video and if you're under 16 like I was when I was doing it I would highly suggest that you wait because besides the whole price issue and the complexity issue you're also going to need like a, a lot of freedom in what you do like you'll need your own like you'll need a certain amount of space where you can do this like a basement so you do need a good amount of freedom if you're going to do this so i ha so if you're under 16 you definitely should get an adult to kind of hand hold you through this process likewise if you're under 16 an adult is willing to but they kind of they don't know this like they are, but if they themselves don't know how to do this, I, again, you should really wait until you are 16 to do it, even if you do have an adult that wants to help you. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, talk about the X or give the explanation as to how nuclear um, fusion works on a subatomic level. So I'm going to use these black circles to represent a uh, like our nuclear um they're going to represent our nuclei and then as our let's miss so let's say they go towards each other and they collide right and then as our result and remember these are two nuclei so these don't have any electrons so our result from this is going to be a bunch of energy so this is to represent the energy. And also we're gonna have a larger nuclei being formed. So that's pretty much how um, nuclear fusion works uh, on a on a, on a subatomic level. And this is what under this is what's like undergoing in the sun. But in the case of like those big power plants that generate a lot of energy, they're actually doing the opposite of this, where they're liking they're they'll they'll ha they'll uh, they're having a bigger particle go into two smaller particles, and that's called nuclear fission. That's different from what we're doing, and even though both release a lot of energy, in the specific case that we're, of our homemade nuclear fusion reactors, we're not going to be generating like these crazy amounts of energy to to like fuel the, the whole world or something. But anyways, let's move on to the actual process of like how you would how you would build the um oops how you would 
how, how you would actually like build the um the how you would actually build the your fusion reactor so the first thing you're wanting to do is to set up is to get your vacuum chamber and your vacuum chamber uh is going to have like a bunch of other gases in it like air but we're going to remove that through our vacuum pump and the reason why we need a vacuum where nothing is in is because in order for fusion to take place we'd have uh we need a like a complete vacuum otherwise we'd have a bunch of interference from the particles like air so you can get a vacuum chamber on ebay um i don't remember where i got mine or what it specifically is but i do remember it being really expensive so that's one thing you should definitely take into account but anyways the vat let's set up our vacuum chamber and it's kind of going to be the heart of our our system so Next, let's name it. Oops. Um, and then let's name it. Um, uh, oh, no, uh, hmm, let me see the next one. Vacuum. And then, so this is going to be out. And then let's make it like a little bit. Okay, close. Okay, so that took a while, but th this is our chamber. So now let's move on to our next step, which is to set up our vacuum pump. The thing that I, uh, the thing, the thing that's going to clear all the the air out of our vacuum chamber and the chamber. So there's this is a really complicated section, but um. There's, there's a lot of like nuances and pump types too, like specifically between mechanical pumps and diffusion pumps, as well as all the different stages pumps. So if you actually like really want to learn about this, um, you should definitely do more research and find a pump that definitely suits like what you like your like what you what your budget is, and also the how far you want to go into this. But Pretty much the vacuum pump works as I said before, but uh, in our case, we're kind of going to we're going to have a little bit of a complex setup. With firstly, let's let's have our okay. So this is our diffusion pump. Diffusion. Let's make it ten. And then, so this is our diffusion pump, and then this is our, we connect our diffusion pump to another pump, which is going to be our mechanical pump. Now, the mechanical pump is really the only one you need. Um, the diffusion pump is just going to, is like an extra add-on to your mechanical pump. And, uh, the, but the mechanical one is technically all you need, hypothetically all you need. But if you want to actually do this, um, you should definitely get a uh, get like a um, get get a diffusion pump. You you probably will need a diffusion pump, but the mechanical pump is technically all you need. Um, it's kind of like how it says. It's just it the means by which it, it, it evacuates our chamber are mechanical, and in the case of the diffusion pump, it it'll boil the it, the diffusion pump's more complicated, but it's going to use heat to get rid of the gas particles in the chamber but now uh let's move on to the next step is to build your inner grid so your inner grid like how it says is going to be like right is going to be it's going to be like it's going to be inside your chamber so let's draw oops not there let's draw our inner grid so it's inside our inner chamber and what it what it does is it it's where we it's where we attach our high voltage feed through. So I'll, I'll, let's just go up and already set that up. So this is where we're going to attach our high voltage feed through. And the purpose of this is to confine and shape the plasma generated the, from the process of like ionizing our deuterium gas. So this part, like every other part, but also this part is very important because it's what kind of controls the it's what controls the, the, it's what keeps the plasma from going all over the place. So the next part to set up is our, 
deuterium 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 system. This is kind of simple. It's just the gas that we're going to be using is deuterium. Um, so I'll just kind of write it in like, oops. But uh, what am I doing? Um, so let's just gas. Um, so this is our gas. This is the gas we're going to be using. We're going to be using deuterium gas, and it's going to be what's the the. Oops. And uh, that's it's going to be what's kind of like feeding this project in a sense. It's going to be it's going to be the gas we're using. It's going to be supplying our gas to our chamber. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty self-explanatory. So. There isn't really much to explain, and you can already kind of begin to see what, like, just how the, how, how our, how, how our chamber is really like the heart of our whole project. So, finally, our last step is to set up the high voltage, and we already set up our inner grid, so now we simply attach our high voltage to our inner grid and we're done. But, um, well, obviously, if you actually build it, there are going to be more steps than the ones I just listed, and there are going to be further steps than just high voltage. But in terms of conceptually, this we're pretty much done because right now what our high voltage does is our high voltage. It's we attach our high voltage to our inner grid, and in our inner grid, where uh, our inner grid will be able to produce a plasma, like which is an ionized gas, by creating a super strong electronic field around the wires. And then it's going to have these really, really powerful electrons that will hit the hit the gas molecules from here. And we're going to and gas and then when the, those electrons hit the gas molecules, electrons in those gas molecules will be knocked off, which will result in an ionized gas particles. And after uh, after we continue this process for like a little bit, we'll create a plasma which will surround the inner grid. Um, so now I'm going to, uh, now that uh, I did the explanation, I'm going to show you a couple of parts and I'll show you kind of what they do. So firstly, I'll show you this big thing you see right here is going, it's our pump. And this was the, the, I don't remember all the specifics of it, but I, I got this one. I, I think I got this one first and this was when I got in, in sixth grade. And I, I think I, I, no, I didn't get it from eBay. I got the other one from eBay. Um, this one I ordered from a manufacturing site. I don't remember what it's called, but you can see it right here. The model, it's EXT255HI on BOC Edwards. Um, so, yeah, uh, even as the serial number on there, um, it has this part on it too. Um, yeah, so you can see this is, the, this is the pump. This is not just the pump, but this is, this is part of the pump. And um, you would need further like things. So, and then the other part I have here is this. And these are super heavy, so make sure you have. It's this. And this is the chamber, as you can see, and you can kind of tell. Like, look at how many holes it has. It has holes from every which. So it has three holes, and then it has one other area where you can connect the high voltage to. So. That's that, and then uh, this was also part of um, uh, this was part of this this thing right here. 